beautiful soul. Brittany Shawley here. Good to see you. Good to be with you today. Thank you for joining me for the topic. I know that this is a big one talking about the idea of sacrifice, um, but I know most of us, if not all of us, myself included, have to go through peeling back what sacrifice actually means to have a reinterpretation be given us so that we don't feel like we're losing the things that we treasure and we want and we desire in this world when we are on our path to, to freedom, to awakening, to truth, to God. Um, so before I begin and dive into the powerful lesson of today, um, I just want to say, first of all, thank you for being here. I know it's been a while. I have definitely said I'm going to do more videos this year, but who knew that COVID was going to happen? <laughs> and I trust God's will in this, and I have definitely been sharing my efforts and my energy in the direction where I needed it the most. If you want to know more about what I'm up to, I have links below in the comments. Um, and then number two, you guys, I want to share some really, really good news with you. Um, I have been thinking about you know how I can reconnect with my Course in Miracles community more and obviously YouTube videos is one of them and here I am but I really started to think about how much we're missing the interaction the relationships the communication the coming together the healing together the back and forthness that happens in real life and in real time and so I started to contemplate all the ways that maybe we can get together um, on a regular and consistent basis that will allow us to feel more like a community and remember ourselves as family in the kingdom of God and to really, really be able to overcome whatever life challenges we're, we're, we're dealing with and at the same time go through the A Course in Miracles in a fashion that allows us to really understand it together, um, really apply it to our life, our mind, and our relationships, um, and then to really allow miracles to be natural in our everyday life. And so I realized why not have a monthly gathering online where we can meet face to face in a private group that's just for us, of course, of miracle students, where we can go through the text from beginning to end with each other. And so that's what I've set up for you guys is that um, you'll see the links below in, in the section below. And let me know in the comments if this interests you. But every second Thursday of every month, we are now going to meet online in a private um, online group, um, um, meeting room rather, and we're going to be going through the text of the A Course of Miracles. Does that interest you? Do you want to be part of it? It's free. It's a love offering, you guys, from my heart to yours. I feel like this is how I can contribute to the awakening on this planet, to increasing the quality of health and happiness on this planet, which is my soul's purpose and mission here. Um, and so I would love for you to join me. So you will see links below. Definitely click on them. Sign up. As I mentioned, it's free. You will get the emails with the links to join us in the group. And that will be every second Thursday going forward from now until until it's not supposed to happen anymore. So I hope that excites you as much as it excites me and we'll be able to see each other face to face. You can ask questions, bring your stories and experiences. And I just, oh, I look forward to it. So yay. So with that out of the way, you guys, let's dive into this important topic. Okay. I would even recommend pausing the video if you can, so you can like take notes and write some stuff down because this is like a really important one. I'm even going to be referencing my own notes because I wanted to make sure that I had a nice flow to this so that it really made sense from beginning to end. So I think I'm just going to start, I'm just going to start here. Okay, you guys. So the idea of sacrifice, when we think about it in the context of truth, it is clear for us to see that sacrifice is an illusion because truth being synonymous with God is also synonymous with everything, completion, um, unity, you know, love, wholeness. Um, so because God and truth is everything. There's nothing lacking and there is no loss. So sacrifice is an illusion in the context of truth. But really in the context of living life on earth, that doesn't really help very much. That just appears to be a concept. So I really wanna break down that concept of sacrifice being an illusion and help you to understand it from two different perspectives, okay? Because there could be two purposes that are laid on the idea of sacrifice. So the first one that we are going to explore is that sacrifice as it appears to us in human form. So we'll, we're gonna dissect that idea of sacrifice first. And then the second idea of sacrifice, we will see it as a reinterpretation. So how the Holy Spirit or Jesus would have us see the idea of sacrifice to bring more clarity um, to us about what that means and how to go about it in, in our daily lives. So 
let's start with number one sacrifice as it appears to be um so i gave this obviously you know a lot of thought um and I've also referenced the section in the teacher's manual called what is the true meaning of sacrifice that I really recommend you diving into if you want even more understanding of sacrifice. But sacrifice, as it appears, is giving up the things that you see as valuable, desirable, that are your treasures, that are your wants in this world. So we see it as a sacrifice to give up certain things of the world. So let's just start naming them. Um, the first one that comes to mind is the one that I have struggled with the most, I must say, which is the idea of fantasy, where you have this image of the perfect person, the perfect Prince Charming, who's gonna come in and save you and you know make you feel worthy and worship your body and like really make make you feel like you're you're enough right um, I know especially for us as women we're fed all of the images in magazines and in princess Disney movies and all of the fairy tales where we get sweeped off our feet by this knight in shining armor and it's bullshit but it is ingrained so deeply into our subconscious and it's what we are programmed to think and believe is true about relationships that it really does feel like a loss when we're no longer seeking for that tall, dark and handsome man who's got all the money and he's got the big home and he's got all these things to take care of me and make me feel worthy, right? It really feels like something desirable. I know it was for me for many, many years and I ex did crazy mistakes with having that as my split goal. So first of all, fantasy. If you can relate to this, give me a what's up, a comment, a like, a whatever in, in the comments below. I wanna see that we're not alone here and we all kind of share in these things together. Um, so some more things that we feel like we have to give up and that it's a sacrifice are fame, fortune, like money, um, are like even sex or physical pleasure. That seems like a big loss um, to the mind. Um, and even anything that has to do with like power or prestige, um, even just the things that we start to accumulate in the world, it seems like it's a loss to us if we're asked to let all that stuff go. Um, so how do we get around this? I found that the best way to get around this is to ask, who is the hero who wants those things? Who's the hero that wants better hot sex that's gonna light your soul on fire? Like, who is it that wants more money? Who is it that wants that fame and the prestige and you know the success and all the things that the world has to offer? Like, who's the hero behind those things and who wants those things? I'll give you a minute. Maybe write it below. It's the body, of course it's the body. It's the body that wants those things. So the thing is, is that by seeking these things, the mind then identifies itself with the body as its identity, and that becomes the block that obscures who it really is from their awareness. So the very fact that you want and you desire um, and you treasure these things, it's not bad, and it's not even wrong. It's not even wrong, but it is obscuring your true reality, okay? It is obscuring the truth of your being, okay? Um, so. Basically, um, what that also does is since it obscures your identity, your true identity, it also obscures the truth that all pleasure comes from doing God's will. We won't see that all pleasure comes from doing God's will because we see that pleasure comes from sex and pleasure comes from having a better house and a better car and more money and nicer clothes and all of these things that the world says you need to have in order to be good enough, in order to be worthy enough, okay? So to see it like this, you know, it's, it definitely, definitely seems like a loss, okay? Do you agree? Definitely. When I'm in that mindset, definitely feels like a loss. Um, but the mind then is con like almost condemns itself. It really does because then it seeks for all these things in the world, but it never finds it. And even if it does find it, it has a deep sense of still lack inside themselves. And you will see this in the stories of the people who have the money and they have the fame and they have the relationships and they have the house and they have the car, but then they commit suicide like Robin Williams or like the so many celebrities that we see who are, are dying and killing themselves because they realize that once they have all those things that they're still missing something. Okay. So today we're going to point out, well, what is it that you're actually wanting and actually asking for so that you're no longer condemning yourself to dissatisfaction and discontentment forever in your life on earth? Okay, I don't want that for you. Um, and because if you're seeking these things 
um, in the world, then you're not actually seeking for what you really, really want. So this is where the turnaround has to happen. And I find it happens through a question, right? Who can escape self-condemnation? Who, 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 and how? How can you escape condemnation, self-condemnation? Only through God's word, only through God's will. It has to come from something greater than ourselves because if ourself made up this identity of body who's seeking all these things, it's not the self of the body that can get you out. It's only God's word. It's only God's will that you can get you out. It's something greater than ourselves. So the next step is where this leads into the second part of sacrifice being a reinterpretation. So let's try and like reinterpret this for us because I have really come to learn in my own personal experience in my life that us as God's teachers, which is what we all become as we go through the lessons of A Course in Miracles and realize that we have a purpose and a mission to fulfill on this planet that brings us joy um, and we want to learn what that is, we as God's teachers cannot have any regrets of giving up the things of this world. We can't because as God's teachers, we are here to demonstrate that all pleasure comes from doing God's will, that all pleasure comes from um, fulfilling the word of God, right? Giving um, and not with a thought of, of getting or taking because in God's will, in the word of God is all given us and there is nothing lacking and there's nothing missing and it's completely whole and it's completely perfect and it's complete, okay? And that's the truth of the realization, but we will never come to that true realization until we get to the possibility of us being able to be like, wow, maybe these things of the world is not really my treasure and not really what I want. So before we get into sacrifice as a reinterpretation, I want to share a little bit of my story of how I had to go through this very idea of sacrifice. Okay. So when I first began studying the Course in Miracles 10 plus years ago now, um, I was living in my own home. I had my own apartment. I had my own practice as a life coach. I was going to CrossFit every morning, which I did love. I was seeing clients all the time, super, super busy, basically living my life on my own terms. And even though a lot of the time it was very happy and it was in flow, when I would actually sit and get quiet, there was a lot of lack of self-love. There was a lot of lack of confidence there was a lot of doubt there was a lot of uncertainty I really felt like I was doing it on my own and if I ever stopped pushing 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 doing 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 it it would all fall apart right and so I, I was really caught up on the idea of doing and working very masculine energy of push 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 all the time and then I remember coming across a lesson in the Course in Miracles that says um, there is no will but God's there's no will but God's or there is only one will and it is God's, something like that. <laughs> Help me out if you know what I'm talking about. Put it in the comments. Um, but that one made me go, oh my God. Well, what is my goal for doing, 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 working, 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 going, going, going all the time? What is my goal for going to the gym and going to CrossFit and, and keeping myself busy all the stinking time? And I realized that my goal was to perfect my body that my goal was to make me appear as worthy enough in the eyes of my parents because they saw me so successful at such a young age. My goal was to try and get things from other people in the process of trying to help others. So I recognized the split goal inside myself, that half of me wanted to help and wanted to love and wanted to bless and wanted to be good. And then the other half of me really didn't like myself, really just wanted to take from other people, really was just um, doubting all the time and, and, and really just trying to get and perfect this body and when I realized the split goal I was like oh my god that cannot be anymore like I can't do that anymore so literally what I did is I went in the next day and I talked to, to my boss because I worked there at CrossFit every morning at 6 a.m. and I trained people and I trained myself there and I told her that I, I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't go anymore um, when and then I started to just not seek out my clients and try to get clients all the time and I literally was like God where would you have me be and that was the beginning of when I started to travel and I literally put all my belongings in a big duffel bag I gave everything else away and I started traveling and God took me all around the world and you guys know that you saw that because in 2011 12 and 13 and even 14 I was traveling with myself with God and with G and with Tom and Jesus um, and I was being led and I was learning how to trust and I was learning that God's will 
is where all pleasure comes from. I was learning that I can trust him and trust his voice and he will always take care of me and I will always have food to eat and I will always have clothes to wear and I always have a roof over my head and I will always have these things but it doesn't have to come from my own push, 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 struggle, 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 fight, 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 do, do, do. But instead it can come from this place of allowing, of trusting, of asking, of listening, of prayer, of gratitude, of one thing at a time based on the guidance that is given me. Okay, so it really shifted for me um, from one state of being to another state of being and the other state of being is the one that I'm continuing to be in now. And it has brought me the baby and the home and the relationship and the joy and the purpose and the fulfillment and the success that you'd think would be lacking when you choose God's will. <laughs> A lot of the time it might be delayed because you're going through a process of faith first. You got need to like build up your faith in order to be the giver of miracles and experiencer of miracles in your everyday life. But it happens and you are given everything. But it's often given everything um, first inside your mind as an accepted idea that it's like, yes, like, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. And then it starts to fall to form. So I wanted to share that story because I think it's relatable to a lot of people. And if you relate to it, write it down below that we feel like we are the ones who have to control everything, that the world is on our shoulders, that the ability to make money is on our shoulders, that all these things are up to us, but really it's up to God. And it it doesn't mean I don't do anything because my life is still super duper uber busy, but it starts with being guided. What would you have me say? What would you have me do? Who would you have me talk to? And doing only that. And so that when I feel like I need to rest, I rest. And when I feel like I need to do work, I do work. But my feelings are now in alignment with the will of God. And so I know that everything that I'm doing is for the good of everyone and not just myself alone. And that when I choose the will for everyone, that I don't miss anything nothing is lacking in my life, that everything has given me and it's actually an ever expanding joy and an ever expanding wholeness and an ever expanding health. Like you guys, I was struggling every single day trying to work out, trying to eat healthier, trying to do all these things and the weight just didn't leave, it just didn't go. It wasn't until I let go of my idea of the separate goal where the weight fell off of me, my face cleared up, everything about my life shifted, my relationships enhanced with my, my family, like everything changed when I let go of trying to do it by myself alone. And I think that that is the point here, is moving from the old way of operating, trying to get and seek all these things, instead of seeking only one thing. What is it that I really, really want? Ask yourself, what is it that I really, really want? And that day, with that A Course in Miracles lesson, I realized that what I really, 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 really wanted was God's will. Because in God's will is my happiness. In God's will is the salvation of the planet. In God's will is supreme joy and purpose and understanding and healing and blessing for me and for every other person on the planet. There is nothing lacking in choosing God's will. That is the place that we're getting to today. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, that when we are seeking these things of the world, that there is a cost in believing to these illusions, right? Because we won't actually have the joy and the peace and the certainty and the gifts and the purpose that God has given us when we're seeking these things of form. But when we seek the truth, everything is added unto us. We are rewarded by seeking only truth. And that's the amazing thing, right? Um, so now let's get into a little bit of practicality of what we do when we realize that we have these um, wants, desires, treasures in the world. There's two things that we can do. This was already what I knew because of my own experience, but then it was also relayed to me in a message this week from my dear friend Dario. So thank you, shout out to you brother, <laughs> for reigniting this fire of the importance of this lesson today. But there are two things that we do when we realize that we are wanting things and desiring things and treasuring things of the world and thus seeing our body as the hero in that adventure is one, we give those illusions to God. It's literally in, in some of the lessons, we have like the imagery of like laying our illusions at the feet of Jesus, you know, like bring them to him to bring them to God and just be like, here they are. Like I desire more sex. Like I desire to feel, you know, um, you know, have more money. I have the desire to have all of these things, but I give them to you, God, right? And and literally the imagery of like handing them over because what's gonna happen when you hand over all of those things over is two things. One is it will be given back to you, transformed, purified. These things will be given back to you, 
purified so that you can see them differently and understand them from a new perspective. And I know for me, when I did this with sex, <laughs> sex was given back to me in a completely new light. It was shown to me that it has two purposes. One of them is procreation. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. And the other one is fun. But there is no, um, there's no treasure on that. It, it's fun. Even Jesus says in the section of this, in the, in the, um, what's the true meaning of sacrifice? He says, do adults resent giving up children's toys? No, we don't. Sex is a children's toy. It's what you play with when you think that's the best experience you can have on planet earth is to share a sex experience with somebody else. We think that's the best, most enlightened thing that we can experience here. And it's so not. It may be the top of the scale of illusions, but it is not where joy comes from. It's not where connection comes from. It's not where increased awakening or enlightenment or anything comes from. All of that comes from God and only God. And this is what we're learning. And so I really, it was very simplified in my mind, whereas before I thought it was everything. That's what I really thought that I wanted like really wanted and that if it wasn't there all the time that something was missing and I've learned since that there's nothing missing because <laughs> all pleasure comes from doing God's will and the pleasure from doing God's will is so much greater than an orgasm you guys and it's so much longer lasting <laughs> doesn't mean orgasms aren't fun once in a while but it's just fun it's like a child's toy it really really is and so this is what we're, we're getting into the realization so when you give your desires and your treasures to God they come back to you purified they come back to you transformed. So they don't have so much charged energy on it that, that you're not seeking to get those things all the time. And so it's like, oh, all right. <laughs> it is what it is, right? Or when you give these things to God and it's like, here, here are the things that I think that I want and I think that I treasure and I think that I desire. What also could happen is we are shown that they're already holy. And then it's given back to us as being part of God's will. So notice here in the situation that only two things happen. It purifies and transforms or it already is holy and becomes part of God's will. There's no loss. There's no lack. There's no nothing. God doesn't say, no, you can't go have sex and make a lot of money and have all the big houses and the nice fancy cars. He doesn't. I know there's a Tesla in my future. <laughs> I know there's billions of dollars in my future to bless the planet. And I see practically how that can happen. But all of that stuff came after I decided 100% completely and entirely for God's will. And I want to know God and know myself as God's child. All of that comes after. And so that's what I almost want you guys to do is like hand all of these wants and desires at the feet of Jesus, knowing that there is no laws, knowing that there really is no sacrifice and being willing to learn that. Okay. Um, well, then what do you really, really want? If it's not these things of the world that we're seeking, what do you really, really, really want? And I want that to be like a journal prompt that you can answer um, and really let the Holy Spirit show to you what you really, really want and, and how much you really want that, okay? Because that is what will help us to get to the point of being willing to let go of all the things we think that we want. Yeah, decide for God and everything is given you at no cost at all. Decide for God and everything is given you at no cost at all. Decide for God and all things are given you at no cost at all. <laughs> Not at all. There's no expense. And then Jesus asked us at the end of the section, what would you teach? <laughs> would you teach sacrifice? Would you teach that the hero is the body? Or would you teach that there is no sacrifice? And that when you decide for God, Everything is given you and there is no cost. No cost. So that is what I leave you with you guys today. And so maybe what I'll do is I'll just settle into prayer with you guys here for a moment. And um, let this prayer really join our minds to the will of God. And help us to release and undo that which we don't really, really want and to accept and receive what God's already given us. Okay, prayer time. Prayer is the medium of miracles. Let's not forget that. Dear God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, thank you to everyone who is joining in on this prayer today. May we all feel your peace and your comfort and your love and hear your voice speaking loudly and calmly in our minds. 
May we hear and recognize all of the things that we had thought that we wanted and we thought that we desired in place of what we truly want. I give all those things to you right now, Jesus. I lay them at your feet. May you help me to let these go. I can feel you holding my hand. I can feel you standing beside me as all of our mighty companions are together in this moment. We're all kneeling, facing God together, side by side, shoulder to shoulder, with all of our seeming wants and desires and treasures laid at the feet. We hand them to you, God. Take them from us. The only thing we want is your will. Thank you for your peace, for your certainty, for your purpose, for your love, for your joy, and for salvation. I accept it for me and for all the world today. We are all blessed in choosing and deciding for what is true. This is the truth we all share and it comes from you, God. Thank you for relaying to me the vision, the feeling, the energy, and hearing the words that help me to deepen my understanding and my faith in you and your will. Thank you for helping me to see that all pleasure comes from doing God's will. And today and every day going forward, I commit to doing your will every single day. Use me, show me, speak to me, heal me. Thank you, God. And so it is. Feel that light, brother and sister souls. Feel your heart opening, your limbs tingling. And all that healing is happening on a deep subconscious level. And just remember that this prayer and this message is going to continue to work inside of you. So continue to ask for what you really, really, really want in truth and be grateful for it. And do so if you can before you go to sleep at night and when you wake up in the morning because those are the two times that start your day and complete your day and you're really working in unison with the spirit and the subconscious mind to really bring to you everything that God wills to you, which is everything you could ever want more. Everything you could ever want more. I promise. Everything you could ever want more. Oh my God. And I know this from experience. <laughs> So you guys, I hope this was helpful for you. If you enjoyed this and you benefited from it, please let me know below. I still would really like to see you every second Thursday of every single month at our Miracles study group. Again, those links are in the comments. Thank you so much for being here. Share this with anybody that you think might benefit. Um, but I love you. I'm here for you. Reach out anytime and I will see you soon. Have a good day, beautiful soul.